Um, when the flight surgeon comes on the radio and he's speaking to Commander Frank Borman, it's a Gemini 7, this is the flight surgeon. Have you had any dandruff problem up there, Frank? Um, that's just a word you don't really expect to see in a mission transcript. <laughs> also, lotion. Um, it's like two men orbiting Earth talking about skin care. <clears throat> You had to kind of feel bad for them also because, you know, bear in mind, this is zero gravity. So if you, do ha if you are having a dandruff problem, it's not falling to the ground. It's not falling to your shoulders. Actually, it's just, it's just floating. <laughs> I actually, I, inter I asked Captain Lovell about this. I believe my exact words were, was it just like a snow globe in there? <laughs> uh, he said, Mary, you're investigating a rather unusual aspect of space flight. <laughs> I guess what I'm getting at is that I wasn't really interested in the heroics, the, you know, the triumphs and the tragedies of space, which is mostly what you, you hear about. I was more interested in the stuff in between, you know, the, the small comedies and the everyday victories, kind of the human stuff, which wasn't always easy to do. Um, I'm here to tell you it is easier to send a man to the moon than to get NASA to return an email whose subject line says, zero gravity intercourse. <laughs> I basically had to go all the way to Star City, Russia, and, and, and talk to cosmonauts who will talk about love and sex and death. <clears throat> the fact that you are um, often drinking whiskey at 11 in the morning makes the job a little bit easier. Um, the book is, it, it, my book's about at the astronaut life, life in the void, because that's just fascinating, and it's, it's, the, it's some of the mo just coolest, strangest science you will ever find. Um, but it's also about simulations, space simulations, because, because space is so strange and hostile and unpredictable and incredibly expensive, everything an astronaut does, whether it's planning the flag on the moon, it, just absolutely everything that's done, every piece of equipment gets tested in these elaborate and often really bizarre simulations here on Earth. By way of example, um, the toilet. <clears throat> now, an Earth toilet makes use of gravity. You don't really think about it. You think of the flushing water, et cetera, but it, it makes use of gravity because gravity is what causes the, ma the material, <laughs> as NASA likes to say, the material, to separate from the body. You know, you have the growing mass of material and gravitational pull increases, and then you have the, the plop. Um, <laughs> no gravity, no plop. So, and this is, this is you know, we, a, 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 a big challenge, and so <laughs> um, it's up to the space toilet to create the holy grail of the uh, space waste management system, and that is good separation. <laughs> there's a lot of talk in the, the NASA Waste Management Division about good separation, and it's a, it's a serious morale issue. Um, <laughs> space toilets use airflow, air drag, which sort of, you know, wish, sort of air drag pulls it along where it's supposed to go to entrain the bolus is the actual term. Um, okay, but so what my, sorry, I kind of got distracted. The, um, it, without doing some testing, some simulations, you don't know how much air drag you need. So, <laughs> you, it's, it's, and it's an issue. So you haul your space toilet, your prototype, over to Ellington Field, and you load it on this big plane, this C9, which does these, it flies like this. And as it goes over the top and down, you have about 22 seconds of weightlessness. Now think about this. <laughs> Not too hard. <laughs> the poor waste management systems volunteer has 22 seconds in which to produce. <clears throat> and that is why NASA employs an individual, and I won't name his name, um, it, it, and his job is th to make a simulant so that you don't have to have the poor guy, and they have done this, the poor guy has gone up and tried to, a lot of cheering and coaching and <laughs> wasted money. Um, so there's a guy who makes simulants, actually, uh, and y y this being NASA, they didn't just call up the diaper industry and say, hey, what do you guys use? Because the, the, in the diaper industry, they do actually, they use uh, peanut butter, uh, D sort of disturbingly appetizing things, pumpkin pie filling, mashed potatoes, and brownie mix are things that they've used. So NASA is like, no, we are, we are NASA, we will make our own, we will have engineers. <laughs> and they did, 
And it's quite extraordinary. Um, see, I told you you would regret this. <laughs> um, now, uh, speaking of diapers, I have to tell you something. Um, Bill Rusin, who is not an astronaut, is the head of sales. Bill, is Bill, Bill, will you stay? There he is, Bill. I just want everybody to see. There's Bill Rusin. Okay, Bill Rusin, the head of sales at W.W. Norton and Company, actually, seriously, asked me to come up here wearing an astronaut diaper um, in front of all of you wonderful people, in front of John Stewart and more. <laughs> But I wouldn't do it. I have my dignity. Not very much of it, but I have it. Um, anyway, I, I'm not going to, I've gone way off on a tangent here. I just I actually want to, I, I really want to thank all of you booksellers, book buyers, book enthusiasts, all of you people who, whose support makes it possible for me to do the sort of bizarre, peculiar things that I do and make a living at it. I'm, you make me the happiest woman on earth and possibly the entire solar system. So thank you very much. <laughs>so uh, I was going to do a, a quick uh, Q&A uh, with the audience, but I don't know about you, but I, I, I feel like I have to go to the men's room all of a sudden. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if there were bran muffins in that bucket, but I need some drag. Um, but I thought since we, uh, since we have these, uh, these wonderful authors here, and, and you're here, and really, where else are you going to go? You wander around there. Uh, I thought we'd uh, take a couple of questions for our authors very quickly, and then we'll, uh, we'll let you guys go. Although I don't, know how, uh, I don't know how we do that. Although I guess you could raise your hand, and I could say, yes, ma'am. Uh, I was wondering if all the authors, there are a lot of writers here, there are a lot of writers and other authors here. Could you give like one or two sentences of advice that you have on the writing process? Let's start with Grisham.
to throw away pages that you don't like, but it's a great thing to have at least written them. So I think getting started is really important. Terrific. I would actually recommend hiring a team. <laughs> um, you get like 10 guys. Thing goes like this, boom, 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 boom. No, go back, I want it better. Boom, boom, boom. You're fired, you stay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'd like to thank all of you very much for your enthusiasm and being authors. I'm an author, Janet Spur, Beach Chair Diaries, which you can get from your independent bookstore. Boom! But most of all, I'd really like to thank John Grisham. I've followed you for many years. Maybe you've seen me in your backyard, but um, <laughs> I love that you wrote at four o'clock in the morning in your law office with all the uh, lights on and everyone thought you were really